Welcome, OzCat listeners, to the first installment of Council Talk for March 18th, 2014, City Council Study Session with Ann Carr, International Woman of Mystery and Political Pundit, and myself, Mark Garman, editor of the Vallejo Independent Bulletin. We're coming to you from the loft of the beautiful, scenic, and fantastic downtown Vallejo and the townhouse bar and lounge. <laughs> oh, I'm a pundit now. Oh, that yes. sounds naughty. Yes, I don't know. Are. Okay. So what are we talking about? Tonight is March 18th, 2014, and what happened in council tonight? A whole lot of people with proposals in. So what are oh. your thoughts about some of these crazy proposal suggestions and whatnot for the north end of Mare Island? Oh, my goodness. Okay, so tonight, in case you missed it, it was a study session uh, by the city council of all these proposals for North Mare Island. There were and that f- means they don't get to choose. They just listen. They just get to listen and talk. And they talk. talked a lot and raised a lot of questions, some of them very valid and some concerns very valid. So high level, the proposals were, and the Oscar goes to industry and a warehouse proposal. That was one proposal. There were two proposals for housing, but ixnay on those, we'll get back to that. And they went double down on casinos. But two proposals for casinos and one very sexy proposal for a high-tech incubator um, campus with hotel. By a New Zealand guy who admittedly didn't have any money, but a great idea. Right, and really good ideas for marketing. And oh, by the way, uh, his team has been through city proposals before, so they know the area. So along the way, we had some uh, Indian gaming types. We had some guys in suits who potentially looked like they could have been from Las Vegas, and we're not going to make any allusions to what their roots might be with uh, syndicates, but one could only guess. Well, we have no indication of that. We have no indication. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. We don't really know that much about them, except they kept saying, we have money. We can give money now. Right. So I guess sort of the question is, I mean, what do you think about the idea of, of gaming and Indian gaming on Mare Island? There's, there's a whole lot of issues around that, one of which being the fact that we would tr- give the land in trust to a sovereign Indian nation. That I think that's probably the biggest issue around casinos is that, in fact, they need apparently to be run by an uh, Indian tribe, which means that effectively it would be a, an independent nation state within Vallejo. We wouldn't have control over it. Now, proponents of Well, game- we're kind of ethnically factionalized as it is. <laughs> <laughs> well, I suppose it could be diversity in action, except that we wouldn't have any control of that portion of the island. So right. that would be a concern. Well, although Councilmember McConnell did bring up a good point, which is that you can make an agreement beforehand that, that would guarantee provisions and control and so on. So like a lot of things, I think you could say the devil's in the details and... We right. do manage to be devil in the details sometimes. So right. So I think keep McConnell... Keep your eyes on the fine print. McConnell raised good points about how you could contract out and try to isolate the Indian control portion of things, which would be the slot machines. But that's assuming that the gaming proponents would agree to that. And at the end of the day, these proponents come with very deep pockets. They're very seductive because they say, we have gobs of money and we have it now. And so, and oh, by the way, we'll hire lots of people. So that, that is the promise of their business. That's the, um, the sell package, the sizzle. Uh, what's not known is how would the casino compete with other casinos in the area? How long would it take to get approval? It can take up to 10 years and then maybe the thing falls through. Um, would the casino be a high-end casino or would it be low-end? Would it mostly attract local customers who really can't be, afford to be gambling. So I think that there's a social cost that really wasn't addressed at all tonight. Um, N- not really. And Well, I guess the other thing that, I mean, it was touched on a little bit. Um, someone mentioned, who was it, that they, they should agree. I think, wasn't it McConnell that said they should agree to, to provide Gamblers Anonymous or something <laughs> like that? Yeah. I mean, it's, it's kind of a, you know, a band-aid on an issue. Of course, you know, a, a casino is lots and lots of money. But uh, one of the things that, that concerns, well, there's two things really that concern me about it. One would be there are a lot of casinos around, and we'd kind of be the Johnny Come Latelys. Um, and who knows what that environment is going to be like five years from now or something right. when the thing finally gets going. And the other issue is that casinos definitely have a life cycle. And if you look at these places in Vegas, and they build them up, they dump lots of money, and then they kind of get old, peter out, and everybody goes elsewhere and they have to either be repurposed, retests, or leveled and start over. So I guess kind of one of the things about that North End to me is we've got one shot to, 
to put something in there and do it right, and it's going to be a big money investment and set the pace and direction for a lot of the city, fiscally and in terms of the character of our city. Right. So, you know, is a casino the right decision? Yeah, it's, it's, it's inevitably going to bring in a lot of money, but like you say, there's the benefit costs and the social problems associated with it. Right, and is it money we get to keep for all time? It was interesting, I started to look a little bit at the literature on casinos, and not all casinos make it. I think there's this belief, when you say casinos, that people get dollar signs and they think, oh, Cowabunga, Santa Claus is here. But in fact, not all casinos make it, and many cities have invested a lot of money in infrastructure for casinos, only to find that they didn't make it, they moved, they had competition. And so it's not it's not an, a panacea. It's, it's right. not necessarily the golden answer that you might want it to be. Um, one of the other proposals that was very interesting, and actually they managed to put some optimistic dollars and jobs associated with it, was the high-tech campus. Right, right. And um, that one, unfortunately, the developer that's bringing it forward does, apparently doesn't have a lot of direct experience, has some indirect experience. But in terms of... Mostly in, in, they're mostly located in San Francisco, these guys. Right. They're mostly located in San Francisco, so it's not clear that they have done this kind of thing directly before, but they've been involved in one of the, in the high-tech village or the Turo vi village that came before in Vallejo. So um, I, I thought that proposal was, was very interesting and, and something that was very exciting to, to Vallejo. So we'll see if they can make it. Um, here I have my notes. So they said they anticipated that they could bring in as many as 8,600 8,600 jobs and $3.2 million in revenue. So I think a lot of these proposals, it's almost like a, a resume. You, you see someone's very best effort and it's very optimistic at these stages. And then when you get into the details, things start falling out, but very right. promising. And, and, and tonight was just a study session, which means there's no decision made. It's just informational. And uh, what's interesting to me is that a lot of these, all of these proposals were unsolicited. Right. In other words, they had approached Vallejo, which is, is seems to be a a change uh, right. for the town where, you know, for a while everybody was running away, and it seems now that they're looking at us again with the economy improving as right. uh, a place to invest and develop. Yeah, very good news for Vallejo. Apparently a year ago we weren't getting these kinds of proposals, and now we are. And so, and then the other thing that was encouraging about this is that even though we had these uh, five proposals and... Some of them promised big money right away. The council was willing to give direction to staff to say, look, we'd like you to advertise and, and deliberately solicit some potential developers to come and talk to us, not just take whatever happens to float our way. And so I found that very encouraging because I thought, okay, the, the council's not necessarily going to go for the easiest way out here. They're going right. to at least kind of try to stir the water on what they want to see. Yeah, and so, so that's very promising. Yeah, so that was kind of the, uh, the direction to, to staff that came out of this, which is they're going to try to, to reach out and see what else is out there. They're not just going to say, oh, look at the golden ducky and just, just go for it. <laughs> right. <laughs> right. Well, and probably much to the chagrin of particularly the casino operators who were emphasizing very clearly, we have money and we want to spend it tomorrow. We're ready to roll. And um, it, maybe that's valid. I, I will say, to be very candid about my perspective, I'm not a friend of casinos. I don't think it's the right development choice for Vallejo. Um, I am worried about the social cost with them, but, um, uh, you know, perhaps they can surprise me and come up with, quote, a high-end casino that won't have the social problems that are associated with other casinos. Right. And, I mean, casinos got a lot of attention tonight. Uh, um, mm -hmm. You know, Malgapo, Council Member Malgapo, made pretty clear that he was unequivocally in support of casinos. And there's no question. Of course, we know that he was... Uh, involved in a lobby group to bring a casino to Mare Island. So he no longer is, so there's no legal issue. But, you know, one has to say, well, is he, is he really going to make an unbiased decision? So that's, that's one question right. that kind of hovers. Right, and that was unfortunate that no one clarified that and pointed that out to those in the audience that, in fact, Malgapo has lobbied before for casinos, which is not necessarily a deal breaker for his perspective, but... It is, to me, something uh, that his view should be taken with a grain of salt because maybe he's not looking at all of the other options equally. 
Right. And I mean, the flip side of it, that uh, some of the projects that came up were housing related. Uh, one was essentially building more housing. These guys were called, I think, Renaissance, and they were talking about building housing, and they have a some kind of an agreement or endorsement from Toro University to build more student housing. Uh, and then there was another uh, uh, proposal for housing for veterans. Right. And there was a, there was another guy that was proposing housing for veterans with Alzheimer's, but oh right, right, yeah, right. And but uh, he didn't have a proposal ready. No, so. <laughs> and he still thinks we're bankrupt. So right. So yeah. he has a little homework to do. Yeah, or a little so. Alzheimer's. <laughs> Maybe he's one of the clients. Which is for a terrible. The that's a terrible thing to say, but you know, it did cross my mind. What can I tell you? I can't help myself. <laughs> So the, the housing proposals, one, one point of clarification is they weren't actually talking about building new housing, but rehabbing right. some existing apartments there, which on the face of it sounds green and a reuse of existing historical buildings. I, I liked that. I liked the idea of supporting Turo, but um, apparently housing really is known in the Civic Trades is big, not paying for itself, not a, essentially. Yes. And that kind of came up, and we heard from the city manager, Keene, who talked about the fact that they, it's, it's not a big revenue generator. And right. actually, Councilmember Meisner was very explicit after she listened to uh, the city manager mm -hmm. and uh, basically came out by saying, well, no housing for me, which is something that was decided on uh, years ago in the Mirror Island specific plan when they said no more residential. And let's face right. it, we, we've got a lot of residential with Lunar, uh, and we gave them a big chunk of that island. So I, my kind of my sense is it, it's it's enough, don't you think? Right. Apparently, um, and what I, I wasn't aware of is that, in fact, for the Turo expansion that they're going to have with the, adding the nursing school is they already have existing buildings that they're not using. So their housing needs, one can assume, are pretty much handled. I still personally like the idea of reusing some of the housing buildings, but I'm willing to accede to... Uh, you know, smarter people who've done due diligence before and realizing that we really do have enough housing in town and the best use of Mirror Island is as a, or North Mirror Island at least, is for economic development and hopefully job creation. Right, right. There's a lot of talk about, you know, Vallejo is a blue-collar town. <laughs> Although, you know, on the one, and, and we had some representatives from the building trades there who obviously want the union jobs building it. And, and uh, you know, I, I certainly would support that. I mean, jobs building it and if they're union jobs fantastic um you know of course the the flip side is that this sort of talk about mirror island is a blue collar town it does ring true on some level but it, it's also not entirely the world we live in anymore Correct. and uh you know things are are changing and that's one of the things to me that is interesting about the tech campus um which you know you were in a tech industry in so right. what, what are your thoughts about that? Oh, I think if Leo was able to at attract a tech campus, it would be phenomenal for the city. I do think there are obstacles in, in terms of retaining some of the um, ongoing development with tech industry because uh, typically people who work in tech companies, uh, once they start having kids, they want really great schools. And so that would be a big hurdle for right. Vallejo to overcome. However, for... Of course, they were dangling the ferries out there as, right. as a plus. Right. But for startup companies with young people just coming out of school, uh, maybe who aren't, who don't have kids yet, it would be phenomenal. It would be just a great economic engine for the city. So if we could get something like that, I think it would really turn the city around. It would be a big footprint for us. And, and I want to go back to the whole uh, blue collar thing and, and echo something that Council, Meisner, Council Member Meisner said, which was uh, that really I think we have a variety of colors and uh, collars in town and it's not just blue collar anymore. It used to be mostly blue collar when the Navy base was here and they're gone, they're long gone. And so we really need to look at wh where we are now and where we're gonna be in the future. Well, look at this town. It's a mix. It's a chaos. It's cultural anarchy, <laughs> which is one of the things I love about this this town. Right. And it's nice to see. I, I really think we're starting to see we're starting to see the place turn the corner. I hope so. I hope so. All right. And I think that's about all the time we have, Ann. This has been Council Talk with Ann Carr and Mark Garman, a joint production between the Vallejo Independent Bulletin at ibvallejo.com and OzCat Radio. Thank you, Mark.